name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, beloved, it's a truism, but it's actually true linguistically, that when the psalmist, King David, when he writes, blessed are those who hope in the Lord, blessed more accurately translates into joyful. In modern day English, Blessed would really more accurately be transformed as joyful are those who hope in the Lord. Amen? So let's begin with this question. Are you joyful? You don't look very happy to me. And I'm not sure why. It's my first time here. You don't look that happy, but I want you to be happy. Amen? And you know, the Lord himself described his mission in this way. I'm not putting words in his mouth. He's putting words in my mouth, Jesus, from your gospel. It says, I have come that you might have joy and have it to the full. Or to put it another way, I've come that Arizona might have joy and have it to the full. Amen. Would you raise your right hand now with me, everybody in the church? Would you raise your right hand? Happy or sad, would you raise your right hand? And I learned this from John Paul the Great when he would say Mass. Would you say this after me? Jesus, Jesus. I want to be happy. You came for me to know joy. I will not be a sad Catholic. I will not be a grouchy Catholic. I will be a real Catholic filled with love for you, overflowing with joy and bring in your fragrance wherever I go. Amen. Now, did you mean it? Okay, so you should be smiling on the way out here tonight. Amen? Amen. And of course, we'll have a healing service too, I understand. So after Holy Mass, we'll have um, a talk, and then we'll have a healing service. And just to give you like a little anticipatory joy, a little hope, I brought with me um, an amazing relic that I think you might like to touch. The robe of St. Padre Pio has been entrusted to me, the actual robe that he wore. And so I'm going to ask Padre to pray for your intentions tonight. Is that okay? And guess what? It's free of charge. There's no charge tonight. And you know why it's free of charge, don't you? Do you know why it's free of charge? Because he paid the price already. Amen? You say it now. Say this after me. It's free of charge because he paid the price. One more time. It's free of charge. Because he paid the price. Amen. Amen. And so we'll have a healing service as well. And we'll ask God to heal whatever healing that you need, whether it's cancer or maybe it's something emotional. I, I find as I travel that emotional and spiritual healings are much more important than physical healings. And I remember one particular story. Shall I share it with you right now? A healing story. It's a bit tragic. It's a bit tragic, but there's also there's a hidden joy we can find. And I'll get a little closer to you now. Will I scare you if I walk out there to preach? Because sometimes I jump up and down and get excited. Is that okay? You won't be afraid, will you? Okay.
Beloved, I was working in the country of Belize in Central America where our SALT community has uh, several missions. And one day, there was a young man in the hospital. He was dying of some strange affliction. They really didn't know what it was, the doctors there. But his skin had turned a very unusual color. It wasn't normal. It was like a, a mixture of purple and yellow, all of his skin. He was a young guy, I would say 19 years of age. He wasn't part of my parish, but his family had called my parish there in Belize City and asked if I would come and pray over him because we had a, a wonderful healing ministry and I would say a miracle ministry. All kinds of miracles were happening. And so people wanted to get a little bit of that for their own family. And, and I don't blame them. A little bit difficult to squeeze everything in. But I had one of my nuns drive me there after my work that afternoon and that evening. I went to the hospital, to the ICU, and I met the young man. And he was kind of purplish and yellowish and in very bad shape, could, couldn't even talk. And so the, you know, the church in her mercy says when somebody is dying that you can still absolve their sins with a simple symbol, a simple gesture, if they can't talk. And so you simply ask them because, you know, your hearing is the last sense to go when you're sick and dying, is your hearing. So always be careful when you go to the hospital and somebody seems to be dying, be careful what you say. I've heard a few clunkers in my day. Be careful what you say. And so... I asked him, I looked in his eyes, I said, Hijo, this is Father Chen, um, I want to give you the sacrament of anointing. But first, I need to ask you, are you sorry for all the sins of your life? And I asked him to blink his eyes if he was sorry for his sins. And that boy blinked his eyes. And to me, that was like gold. When he blinked his eyes, that was like gold. I was so happy to see that. I said, good. And I absolved his sins right then and there. I said, now let's anoint you. So I laid my hands on his head and I took out the oil from the bishop and gave him the sacrament. And I said a few prayers. When I left, I asked the family to pray the rosary for him. Now, he was supposed to die that night. Supposed to die. There's some, he just got back from Taiwan. He was an exchange student at one point. This strange affliction, dying. They could do nothing about it. They called me at the last minute. He's supposed to be, be dead by midnight. But he got out of bed the next morning, 100% healed. Completely, completely healed. Even the doctor contacted me. They couldn't believe it. I said, well, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not Father Jim or anyone. It's the Holy Spirit who does that. Amen? He got out of bed, was completely healed. And he went home the next morning, stronger than ever before. Because when God does things, he does it right. Amen? The Bible says, Look, he does all things well. Amen? Don't you love Jesus? Don't you love him? How could you be Catholic and not love Jesus? Somebody explain that to me. He does all things well. Amen? Now, you say, say that to me. Say this. Jesus, you do all things well. You're beautiful. And I love you. Amen? It's the greatest commandment, is it not? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, not your head, your heart, then your soul, then your mind, third, and then your strength. But first, your heart and your soul. Amen? So can I tell you a secret? Don't tell anybody else. I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I'm in love with God. Is it okay to say that? I'm in love with God. Every day, he shows me something new. I learn something every day from Jesus. He even appeared to my brother and I when we were teenagers. But more than that, I, the miracles he does and the blessings. He's so good. And the Lord says, you don't know how good he really is. Ask him tonight to reveal to you his goodness and his love. Amen? Ask for it tonight. It reveals to you his goodness. He loves every one of us personally. Amen? And he loved that boy and he healed him perfectly. He went home. And I remember two months later, two of his family members were at my parish, Divine Mercy Catholic Church. They were there for mass. They were good friends of mine. And so I asked them, I said, listen, Carlos and Neri, how is that, that nephew of yours doing? 
say, oh, Father, he's 100% healed, like 110% healed. But Father, I said, yes, of his mom and dad are kind of worried. I said, why is that? Well, he's, he's staying up late at night, and he goes out in his car late at night, and he comes back past midnight, and they're worried about that. And I said, well, maybe they're right. Tell the young man, and I don't mention his name, but tell the young man that Father Jim says, don't do that because you have a new lease on life. God healed you through the blood of his son and through the Holy Spirit. Don't waste the gift that was given to you, an extraordinary gift. Amen? He should have been dead that evening. He was more than alive the next morning. Don't waste that. Don't play with it. So, yes, Father, we'll tell him. Thank you. Well, I saw his uncle and aunt another couple months later. I said, Carlos and Neri, how's that young guy doing? He said, Father, he's completely healed, but Father, yes, his parents were really worried about him. I said, what now? Well, he's up late at night. He's out speeding. He was speeding his car. He'll run into the house for like two minutes and then leave again. They don't know what he's doing, like maybe getting money from his drawer and going out again. I said, oh, that doesn't sound good. Not at midnight, you know what I mean? You know, my daddy used to say that like, nothing good happens after 9 p.m. Nothing good. Just stay home, pray your rosary, don't go out, and don't turn on the television either, amen? Well, I said, I said to him, again, please tell him that father, so I was like his, his father by then, like his spiritual father. So tell him that his father, Father Jim, says, stop it. You're playing with fire. You've received an anointing from heaven. A rare gift that you don't see too much in the world. Healed just like that of a deadly disease instantaneously. Don't play with that. God gave your life back to you for a reason. And everyone here is in the Catholic Church tonight for a reason. Amen? God is a purposeful God. He doesn't do anything arbitrarily. He does everything on purpose. It's all designed in his love, in his love. And so she, they gave the message to the young man. Would you believe it? Two months later, I saw them again. Carlos, Neri, how is the young man doing now? Father, it's worse than ever. Like six months later. And then I got even stronger. And you see, being a true priest is not being sweet and nice and patting people on the head day and night like this. Oh, you poor little sweet thing. Life has been hard to you. Do what you want. Is that what it means to be a priest? Sometimes you're gentle. Sometimes you have to be strong. Amen? And so I got kind of strong. I felt the Holy Spirit rising up. I said, tell him, stop it. Tell him, stop it right now. His life is in danger. I can feel it. Stop it. You're playing with divine gifts. I could feel it in my bones. Your body is in danger. Stop it. Amen? Was I right or wrong? So they went and told the boy. And three days later, not listening to anything I tried to say to him, he came rushing home at midnight dashed into his bedroom for like 30 seconds. Mom and dad were wide awake in their bedroom, trembling. He grabbed something from his bureau and went out. He revved his car up and sped down the road. And then mom and dad heard the most horrific crash in their life. About 30 seconds later, the most horrendous crash. And the car flipped three times right down the road and crushed him to death. Now, beloved, I share that with you at the Holy Spirit's prompting. First of all, for this purpose, the greater healing is the healing of the heart and the soul. Amen? Without a doubt, the greater healing is the heart and the soul to fall in love with Jesus Christ and to follow him. As the Bible says, to look after orphans and widows in their needs 
and to keep oneself unspotted by the world, that, St. James says, is perfect worship. Amen? In other words, there's a greater healing. It has to do, beloved, with being like Jesus himself. Amen? And that's why today he will feed you. Did you know this? Anybody tell you? Did you know that tonight, Jesus Christ, God and man, body, blood, soul and divinity, will be on the altar in person? Did anybody tell you that? God in person will be on the altar tonight. Amen. Never take that for granted. Never. This might be your last Mass. Amen. It might be my last Mass. Today we receive the Lord like never before. And one of the main reasons why God gives us his Son in the Eucharist is to transform you into another Jesus. To become like Jesus. So I'm going to give you a small lesson now about how to receive the Lord today and every day. When you receive Holy Communion, beloved, never receive with your own faith. Trade your faith for the Virgin Mary's faith. Say, Mama, my faith is tawdry. Take my faith and give me yours. Always come up here with Mary at your side. And receive the Lord with Mary's faith, Mary's hope, and Mary's love. Amen? Now, beloved, one saint said this, that one holy communion has enough grace in it to make anybody on the earth, and any Catholic, into a perfect saint forever. One host. One host. Of course, the body and blood of God and so, beloved, how many times have we received Holy Communion? One host has enough grace to make you to a perfect saint forever. Amen? But today, receive him with Our Lady today. The Lord gives his body and blood every day. But most of the time, it falls on deaf ears because we do not receive him well. But beginning tonight, ask Our Lord and Our Lady, Mother Mary, let me receive your son with your faith, your hope, and your love. Amen? Now, I want to give you one more example because I like to put flesh on the gospel and what we're taught by the Lord. Give you one more example of how powerful the Eucharist is. Can I give you one more example? The Eucharist is the bread of saints. It will transform you into a saint if you let him. I was distributing Holy Communion one day at one of my mission churches in Belize called San Pedro Catholic Church on the island. And it was a Spanish mass in the evening and the church was over, overflowing. Long communion line. And just me and a, a lay minister distributing Holy Communion. And at some point in Holy Communion, a young man came up for communion. And I knew this young fellow because I had married him and his wife some years before. So I knew him. I hadn't seen him in a while. But I went to give him Holy Communion. And the grace from the host came back on me. And I stopped. And I looked at him and I said, Hijo, come see me after Mass, okay? Yes, Father. Then I said, the body of Christ and gave him the Lord. And after Mass, that Sunday evening, there was a long line for confession. There always is there, usually from 50 or more people. So he waited in his line, and the young man finally had his turn came to come sit with me for a few minutes. He came in, and he said, Father, why did you ask me to come see you after Mass? And he got kind of teary-eyed. And so I said to him, well, son, I don't know. The Lord told me to. The Lord. Every Catholic should hear his voice. It's in your Catholic Bible. Your Catholic Bible says this. I won't put any words, right, in God's mouth. I'll put his words into my mouth. Here's what he said. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. They hear my voice. Amen? 
If you don't hear his voice, ask him tonight. When you go home, buy a giant box of Q-tips, please, and clean the ears real good, maybe with holy water. And then ask God to give you the grace to, to obey the scripture and to hear his voice. Amen? We should hear his voice. Mama Mary did, and she's the, she's the example for Catholics. And so I said, I don't know, but the Lord asked me to ask you to come. He got all teary-eyed. He started to break down. He said, Father, my life has been going to pieces. I said, I haven't seen you in a long while, I told him. He said, Father, when I came to Mass tonight, I was ready to die. And I decided to take my life tonight. And I said to Jesus when I walked in, when I receive Holy Communion, Jesus, if you are truly real and truly God in the Eucharist, then I ask you to tell the priest to stop me in the line and to see me after Mass, and then I'll know you're real. Then I won't kill myself, he said. That is who you and I will receive in just a few minutes. Amen? Amen. The greatest honor in the world is to be Roman Catholic. Amen? Amen? The greatest honor in the world. And above that, to be Catholic at Mass! Mamma mia! Amen! That's why the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Amen? That's who you will receive tonight is the body and blood of the God-man. And he's here to make you like himself. And I got news for you. Jesus has a beautiful smile. And I will know that you've received him properly at the end of Mass by your smile. Amen? One more thing. When you and I die and we go to the judgment seat of God, God will know in one second where you belong. So take one look at your face. If you're grouchy, you better start praying because you're not entering heaven. You're either going to down below or to purgatory for about 50, 5,500 years. If you have a little tiny bit of a smile, but kind of like fearful, you probably go to purgatory for 10 years. But if you have a beautiful smile when you go before the Lord, you say, Jesus, is that really you? I love you. I've been waiting for you. He says, I've been waiting for you too. Come on in. Amen. He'll know by your smile where you belong. Amen. Start practicing tonight. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Father God, when we receive Jesus tonight, ask him to fill us with his holy joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.